For most applications, you'll probably be perfectly happy taking shapes and sticking them in the scene graph and then manipulating them there. It works well for most things, but it does have one somewhat significant drawback. And that is the fact that everything that you put in the scene graph is basically using a lot of memory to be there. So for example, when you create a circle, it's actually creating an object that stores all the values of the circle and it is you know, storing things like the fill and the stroke, all those properties that you had for the circle are all being stored there. If you wanted to create many thousands or a million different circles in a scene, or not just circles, whatever other shapes you wanted, that could actually be problematic. For that reason, there is another way to draw in your GUIs, and that is to use the canvas. Now the canvas is itself just a node. And it's just like any of the other nodes that we've had, and you can place it in your scene graph and move it around. But whereas you could, if you think of the scene and the scene graph as being like a magnetic wall that you can stick the shapes to and move them around and change their colors, the canvas would be like a piece of paper or a whiteboard section that gets stuck on the wall. And so you can draw on top of that, and then you could if you wanted to move that around. But the things that are drawn on top of it while they stay there, the individual things weren't remembered. So if you draw a thousand circles, you can't just choose to move one of them. You have, would have to redraw the whole thing in order to get that effect. So the canvas happens to be sitting in a package called, somewhat unsurprisingly, scalafx.scene.canvas. And so we have the canvas type here. We can make it with a width and a height. And in order to actually draw things, turns out that the canvas has a whole bunch of methods in it, but none of them actually draw. In order to do the drawing stuff, we need to get hold of the graphics, graphics context. So there's another type here called graphics context, and it's the graphic con graphics context that has all the ability to draw stuff. So let's go ahead and let's write a little code with this. I've started by moving our template over here, and I'm going to put in the canvas into our includes. And I'm gonna make a new canvas. I'm actually gonna make it as big as the scene. And I'm gonna set the content equal to it. Then, in order to be able to draw to it, I need to get the graphic context, or graphics context, C-A-N-V-A-S dot graphics context 2D, and that gives me back an object of type graphics context. Okay, let's go ahead and run that just to make sure that everything's typed in correctly. Yep, there we go. We have a blank canvas. So what can we do with this canvas? Well, the canvas has a number of different settings. There are types of settings that you are used to from the shapes. Uh, you have the ability to set a fill, which will be a paint to draw with. You have the ability to set things on the stroke. You might have seen up here, there's a miter limit, there's a line width. Okay, so, so a lot of the types of settings that you had on shapes are also going to be available on, on the canvas. Okay, the, the way that you access them through the graphics context might be a little bit different, but it's not too different. It's interesting to note that the graphics context is, and the canvas are heavily modeled after the JavaScript and HTML5. So HTML5 includes a canvas, and in order to draw on it, you have to get a graphics context 2D, much like you do uh, when you're using ScalaFX. Actually, the JavaFX is very heavily modeled after the HTML5 standard. ScalaFX changes a few things to be more Scala-like. Um, but, okay, so we can choose the settings, much like we could have with a shape. And those settings also include transformations, so you can 
set the transforms uh, on on your whole, whole thing. You can do it by setting a, a whole uh, transformation. You can do rotates, etc. And then you can draw things out. And there are basically two sets of methods that draw things. A set that start with the name with the word fill. There are some that do images, draw image. There's also a bunch that start with fill for arcs, ovals, paths, uh, etc. And then there are a number that start with stroke, which will just basically draw a line for you, uh, or the outline of a path. So you can stroke a line there. But notice that the only things that you call draw on are image. Otherwise, you're going to do a fill, or you're going to do a stroke, depending upon whether you want the thing filled in, or just drawn as an outline. Well, let's see how this works. Let's go ahead and let's call fill oval on our graphics context. And whoa. fill oval of, let's put it at 100, 100, 10, 10. And this is the uh, top left corner and the width and the height of our oval. And so I should get a little dot drawn a little bit offset. There we go. Okay, so we can see the how the canvas works there. Maybe it would be interesting, instead of just drawing that there, maybe it would be interesting to have it so that it draws as we use the mouse. So I'm going to take canvas dot on mouse. Let's go with dragged equals e mouse event rocket now I happen to remember that mouse event is uh, inside of input so let's go ahead and let's bring in input <clears throat> and then inside of here let's use our graphics context to draw but not at 100 100 at E dot X and E dot Y. Looks like we have that correct and I click and I draw, oh hey, it's not just one circle that's following my mouse around, it keeps putting more and more circles out. And that's because when you draw to the graphics context, it basically saves everything that you've drawn before. Now as I said, it's not using memory really to save this circle so that you could move this one circle, Instead, it's kind of keeping an image of everything that's been drawn, as opposed to the individual components of it, which uses a lot less memory if we have a whole bunch of things on there. Anyway, what if I did want it to be one circle that follows my mouse around? And in fact, if I want to do that, maybe I don't even want this to be dragged. I want this to be mouse moved. And I just want to have a circle that follows my mouse. Well, okay, I get a whole bunch of circles. How could I fix that? In order to do that, I need to make it so that before I draw this, I clear out my graphics context. And so I'm gonna do that. Turns out that the canvas to start off with is actually transparent. And you can make parts of it transparent again. Uh, Canvas.width.value, canvas.height.value. I just don't want to have too many magic numbers in here. Let's see if that's happy. Okay, and now I have a little circle that follows. So that's our first experience with Canvas. Uh, we'll come back and we'll add a little bit more to this and program a little bit more interesting.